Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. Create a lot of content for MSPs and today I'm going to be showing you guys DLP on iOS devices using app protection policies with Microsoft Intune. So getting into it here and kind of looking at the agenda for today, we're going to be going over the licensing requirements that you'll need for Intune. We'll be going over the MAM versus MDM overview. We'll set up the app protection policy for iOS, and then we'll show you what the end user experience is after that policy is in place. So the licensing considerations in tune is the baseline that you would need here in order to get the MAM policies that we're going to apply. I recommend some of these bundles though, like EMS plus C3, M365B, and M365E3 and E5, just simply because they come with conditional access policies. So this does you a little bit more granular control over where people are accessing these apps depending on their user state or device state, which we'll get into. So we're looking at the current landscape and we're shifting from this trusted perimeter name network where we have users all accessing our data on our corporate network to a mindset where the employee wants to work from anywhere at any time on any device. In addition to that, we're looking at a lot of third-party SaaS applications that are being onboarded that are increasing the risk exposure we have from a security standpoint and compliance standpoint. So new technologies like Microsoft Intune are leveraging device and user claims, trust claims, to grant access to certain applications or certain data based off of certain conditions. And what do we want from a standpoint of a user accessing data on their iOS device? We want them to remain compliant we want to be able to remotely wipe corporate data if that device is lost or stolen or if the employee leaves the company. We want to restrict cut, copy, paste from unmanaged applications just from a DLP standpoint. At the same token, we also want to restrict save as to untrusted locations like personal Google Drive or something like that. And overall, we are going to increase security by doing so. So traditionally, you know, this is an app without uh, any policies applied to it. This is a typical tablet or mobile device where you have a mix of corporate and personal data on the application and the user has free the freedom really to save as to any location that may not be trusted. With MAM policies, mobile application management, we can lock down corporate data, we can separate it from personal data on that same application and we can prevent the user themselves from storing that in an untrusted location. So MAM and MDM mobile device management, which is part of Intune as well too. If this is enrolled in Intune fully, we can control the whole OS of the device itself. We can still separate out personal versus corporate data, but a lot of our users that are bringing in devices that they're accessing data on aren't gonna want that full management uh, and enrolling their device into your corporate enrollment policies that you may have set up. So this is a great solution from Microsoft where we can restrict it at the app level. Uh, but not actually enroll the full device. So getting into it here, we're going to pop into a demo tenant that has M365 Business set up in here. And what I'm going to do first is go into the Endpoint Manager, and I'm going to open up the App section so we can create our app policy. And I've already created one so I could show you the end user experience, but we'll go ahead and set up a new one here. You can name this whatever you like but be sure to put a good description so people know what you're locking down. Big thing here, if you don't want this to apply to all devices, um, this is saying unmanaged or managed. I would select unmanaged if you're trying to apply this to BYOD, personal cell phones, things like that. If you don't do this and you leave yes selected, it's gonna to try to enroll that device in an MDM solution whenever they try to access Outlook or Word, for instance. Here we can select the apps that these policies are going to apply to. So we can say, typically it's just going to be the Office Suite here. And you can also add your own custom third-party applications if you wanted to as well and add them to this list as a trusted location. Traditionally, I just do the, the entire Office Suite here, and I may have missed one, but uh, that's the bulk of them, SharePoint additionally there. So I can select that, and you can also add custom applications here. From a data protect protection standpoint, you have a lot of settings that you can configure. Again, if this is BYOD, you're typically going to want to block it from backup of your corporate data to iTunes or iCloud. You're going to want to say that they can only send the data to policy managed application. They only want to save and copy, again, to policy managed applications. 
And this is going to tell them, you know, when they try to go save as, it's not going to allow them to do any personal location. You could select something down here that is a corporate managed app, like OneDrive, but I'm going to leave that blank for now. Receive data, typically again, policy managed apps, and then same for cut, copy, paste restrictions. You can set a character limit on that. I don't really have a good use case, but typically just leave that at zero and it'll capture everything. Um, encryption of org data for sure. You can block third party keyboards. Sync with the native contacts on the app. This is a, a cool one where you can actually allow them to sync their contacts over to Outlook, for instance. So they try to access the native mail app. They try to put in their credentials. And we'll actually see this. It's gonna tell them that it's blocked. It's not a managed application. And then when they go to Outlook, it could have them sync over their contacts, which is a common pain point for people who don't want to use Outlook. So printing of org data, we can block that. This is the web browser that they're accessing. Let's say they get a link for our SharePoint site, for instance, or a document that's just a link that's been sent. You could set this to any app and it'll open without any restrictions, but you could, the most secure manner would be to do into manage browser. They don't have this as an app they can install from the iTunes store and it'll redirect from there so they can install it so they can access corporate data again in a secure manner. You may just say that they can access it though. They still wouldn't have the ability to do any type of saving or anything like that. And then I will always allow for data notifications. That's fine. So this is another cool part from a security perspective. There's a secondary layer here of security for your managed applications where you can set a pin. So you can define the settings of that pin and you can tell the requirements here from the standpoint of how long, many minutes of inactivity before they have to be reprompted for that pin. They can also use biometrics that you see here if they have uh, an OS that's above a, of a certain version. And then you can tell them that they have to reset their pin after a certain amount of days, typically say no on that one. And uh, this is another good one here. It's gonna tell them to, to reprompt for their credentials this may be something where you never want to do this, just from an employee standpoint of not being disruptive and you, you say you don't require it. Another good use case though is somebody who gets confused with their personal Microsoft account versus work or school and you have to require them to use that. Um, so this one's going to be up to you, but just know this may be something you want to change if you do set it to require. Last one here, conditional launch. This is going to block them out if they missed their pin for over five times. This is the offline grace period, 720 minutes offline activity and offline grace period of being able to wipe data 90 days and then specifically get a wipe data on that app itself on the iOS device. This last one here, our leave, just fine. Jailbroken rooted devices, got a block. Lastly here we have our settings where we can scope this out to certain users. Typically, it's going to be all users. If you have scopes of users you want to apply this to, you can. Um, but I would say, you know, from the standpoint of you not knowing what kind of device a user has, not wanting to collect that data or keep up with it, it is probably best just to do all devices or all users. So again, I have this already created, so I don't really need to get into that. Before we show the end user demo, I did want to show you within the conditional access section here under Active Directory Security, um, I wanted to show you basically a policy that you can create for some heightened security based off of, a, again, user or trust claims. So you could say within this policy, these are your conditions that have to be met, and then these are the access controls that you're putting into place that either grant or block access. So again, we can scope this out to certain users or groups. We could scope this out to certain applications, and we can define the conditions here. Typically, I like to set this one up and include both iOS and Android as the policy itself. And for the client apps, you can do just mobile apps and desktop. And for a grant, you could say grant access, but require it to be approved client app. So it's saying if you access any of the Office suite here or any apps I say, it's gotta be approved client app, which is a certain list that Microsoft has right now. It's typically the entire Office suite. So if they try to access on their native mail client, it's gonna block them from doing so. And we'll see that when we actually go ahead and walk through the end user demo. And then we're gonna require them to have the app protection policy as well too to be able to access it. So it's saying not only does it have to be a required approved app, it has to have that policy that we just created where it's scoped you know, to these certain applications that are defined here in this particular case. 
and this is the other cool part within the policy you can see which apps have checked in and that's from my test user that we'll see in a second so that's everything I wanted to show you guys on this side and now we're going to go into the end user demo so the first part of this demo, I'm going to show you the user experience with that conditional access policy applied, and it's going to show you the user trying to access the native mail app on their iPhone. So we'll pop in here and we'll go to the accounts and we'll go to Microsoft Exchange and we'll type in a user's name here with an Intune license. It's going to go through, it's going to ask us to sign in. So we'll pull it, go ahead and put it in a password. Then once we put in this password here, we'll head and say not now. But it's going to tell us, hey, it looks like you're trying to open this resource with an app that hasn't been approved. So that one is where they're just getting blocked completely with a conditional access policy. This one is showing the user experience with the native Outlook app on the iPhone. So this is, again, the end user has gone to the iTunes store. They've installed this. They click on it here. They are signing in with their credentials and they're typing in their password here as well and it's telling us if this is a setting i wanted to show you that's optional if you have mfa installed and they don't have it enrolled yet it's going to tell them to go get that microsoft authenticator app and then it'll redirect them but this is now telling us that the outlook app is being protected by it and it has to restart so after that's done it'll take us back to this page and we can click on the app again and it'll again go through this checking of the app status and then once it loads up here you can sign back in and then you'll have access to your corporate data so if I refresh the page now I have access to that email so now I want to show you guys the restrictions of cut copy paste and save as as well so if you go in here and you see this is a message from the administrator, I'm going to go ahead and try to copy the body of this particular message and go to Notepad here. And I'm going to try to paste it into Notepad. It's going to tell me here your organization data cannot be pasted here. So that's great. Um, restricts that completely and gives us a clear message. Now I want to open up this Word document. And I have Word installed on this iPhone as well, too. So I'm going to open it up in Word. And again, it's going to check the access requirements for Word here. It'll have you type in that PIN if you haven't logged into Word. And you have set that up as part of your policy. But now it's going to open up this Word document for us. Again here, we're going to try to go ahead and save it, save a copy, and then I can save it to my OneDrive here, but if you scroll down and you try to click on any other, select the Files app or on my phone, and uh, you try to select that here, it's going to tell you your administrator doesn't allow you saving to personal locations. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys from the iOS app protection policy standpoint. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want to see more content related to Microsoft Intune or M365.